scripted within an ancient tome which lies beneath centuries of dust in the guarded library of Mechelon is the story of how the rift was formed. Though most cannot recall a time when the rift did not divide the enclave and the outlands, they were at one time unified. At that time, there were lands where the very essence of magic was believed to dwell, for they were lush and prosperous. All who did not hold the secrets of the soil, which were protected by the Pact of Jifuro, coveted these lands fiercely. The great demon Vatar was among these envious creatures, for he believed that with the magic of these lands in his grasp, he would surely become invincible. And so, he led his army to attack the dwellers of the land and lay claim to it for himself. The battle raged on and on, until at last the mighty wizard Zael stood alone against Vatar to protect the lands. When all hope seemed lost and Vatar's victory eminent, Zael struck the final fatal blow. With a roar of anger and anguish, the wizard slammed his staff into the ground. The world trembled and then parted beneath Vatar's feet. A scream of outrage erupted from the demon's throat as he fell to his defeat. However, victory did not come without a price. The chasm that grew from this powerful blast of magic was too vast to be traversed, and the people were separated as much as the lands. Those who had come to aid their brothers in fighting against the demon's army returned to their home called Mechalon, with stunned minds and heavy hearts. The pact of Jifuro had been broken, and they had become separated from their brothers. The denizens of the Outlands, a dark and selfish people, became known as the Dreg Attar, and the enclave of Magicland, which had been divided from the rest, formed a peaceful city called Selenheim. In time, all wounds are healed, for in the lengthy span since it was torn asunder, it seems that the magic inherent within the world has begun to knit the land back together. The rift grows smaller and can even be crossed in certain locations. Though it should be a time of celebration and rejoicing, such is not the case. For despite the passage of time, the greedy Dregatar still lust after the lands of magic. Raid after raid has been sent into the Enclave, in hopes of weakening it for the major attack the Dregatar intend to wage as soon as they are able. Crops burned and possessions stolen, Selenheim has been thrown into a state of extreme unrest. Heavy taxes are levied upon the people to help pay for the city's defense. This has led to uprisings within the Enclave, and some of its inhabitants have landed in jail, along with the true enemy. And it is here that our story begins. A few rebellious grains of sand within the ever-turning hourglass of life. So, they imprison their own too, I see. The sound you hear is the sound of your death. The rolling thunder of my fellow outlanders. The sound of the Dragatar slaughtering your kind and scaling the walls of this puny fortress. They are coming to set me free. And if they don't get to you first, I will personally rip you apart with my Another brave warrior. We should join forces. You have done us a great service. Helping in staving off these vile invaders despite your imprisonment is bold, to say the least. Isn't this the same one that we had arrested earlier? You expect us to believe that these people are loyal to us when they won't even pay the taxes that they owe? Be gone. Stand up, my son, Edrinau. 
It is true that you have committed a crime against us. Yet it seems you are willing to prove your loyalty to Selenheim. Because of this, I will offer you a proposition. If you continue to serve our cause and assist us in this action, you will receive full pardons and be embraced as honored warriors henceforth. There is a merchant named Marcus in the town of Seladia. He is very important to the Enclave, as he is the last merchant willing to transverse the rift and bring us supplies that are badly needed if we are to have any hope of withstanding the more frequent raids of the Dregatar. I have received word that the Dregatar have assaulted his convoys and attempted to assassinate him. He must be protected. We won't survive long without him. Thanks for your help, but the goods they looted from my caravan are missing. They might be hidden in this deserted temple not far from here. I need your help in getting rid of these outlanders once and for all. Come on, follow me, I'll open the gate for you. Thank you for your help. This has really saved both me and Selenheim from a great deal of trouble. But there is something of even greater importance you need to do, and time is running short. Now I've heard that the Dregatar are planning a major siege within the month against Selenheim. I've not yet been able to get word of it to the Queen. The, the forces of the Enclave are no match for the Dregatar. They'll surely be destroyed and enslaved. But there is one small hope. There is a legend of a people who live beyond the Outlands, the ancestors of Mechalon. Now the stories say they were trusted friends of Selenheim before the rift began. If you could reach them and convince them to lend us aid, we might all be saved. They had won the battle against the Outland Raiders and driven them from Selenheim's soil. And victory was sweet upon their tongues as they set out upon the perilous journey before them. This was their chance to redeem themselves and aid their people. But so many things were unknown, unexplained. Who were these ancestors that Marcus spoke of? Why had Queen Island Dale not sent for them before now? Without time to confer with the Queen, they began. They would have to cross the vast expanse of the dreaded outlands and find these mysterious people who might be able to help. Yet not even Marcus seemed certain that the ancestors still existed, or how they would receive visitors if they did. As the sun descended, they came to the divided city. Once magnificent and proud, the rift had reduced it to nothing more than crumbled buildings and jagged rooftops. Now, as one of the only places where it's possible to cross the rift, dark and twisted shapes await those who wish to traverse it. Marcus sent you? That sniveling little weasel. I'm the only one who has made it to that side and back, you know. But if you want my help, you've got to do something for me first. Marcus took my log along with the other merchandise he was supposed to sell for me. The idiot sold it to some of the locals here, who refused to give it back. Get me my book, and we'll talk about getting you to the other side, though it still won't be cheap. And beware of the water. It's much colder than it seems. It still beats me why anyone would want to go to that forsaken place of Mechel. I even heard rumors that the Outlanders are waging some war there even now. But that's your problem. We still set sail at dawn. Ah, impressive. I've been watching your every move on your little journey. Selenheim is quite a distance to travel, and I believe we may have a common problem. You are seeking our aid against the Outlanders, yes? The magic of Selenheim is inherent in our lands as well, and they are without any doubt going to invade us soon. There is a problem that would have to be dealt with first, however. You see, the passage at Kam Tsara is very narrow, as you know. And it is possible for an entire army to be defeated by a mere handful of men, if they hold it. 
It used to be under our control. However, the Dregatar infiltrated from within and seized it themselves. For us to help you, you will need to see that this pass is destroyed, so that we can get our men through it. And I believe the only one who would truly be strong enough to do such a thing would be the legendary magician called Zael. He seems to have practice at the sort of destruction needed for this. I've heard rumors that he lives even still, and that he was last sighted near a lake further up north. If you can accomplish this, we will send the help you ask for. We have just recently repaired our airship. Bring a fuel container filled with gas, and you may use it to reach your destination faster. Your Highness, they are coming. Ancestors acclaim them as heroes after showing such valor and bravery in the defense against the Outland invasion. Something seemed oddly amiss. The Ancestors had been estranged from their brothers in Selenheim longer than anyone could remember, yet very little negotiation was needed for them to accept the perilous request to send aid against the hordes of Dregatar. The eager offer to assist their downtrodden brothers came at only one request. Destroy the fortress of Kamsala. The Pact of Jifuro forbid such destruction, but the ancestors explained that it was their only hope of reaching the battle in time. For the pass of Kamsara, held tightly by the enemy, was the only obstacle in the fastest route to Selenheim. Being a narrow path, Kamsara was easily defended. It allowed very few men to keep an entire army at bay if need be, and it would be far too difficult if it were not destroyed. Desperate times called for desperate measures. The legendary High Wizard Zael was their last hope. Known as the Scourge of Vatar, the Bane of Zurana, the man who severed the world, Zael must be found. If he still lived and they were able to find him, would he help them? And what cost would the world pay this time for its salvation from evil?
The smoke rose high into the sky, blotting out the sun with its ink-like message. Kamsara's fortress was no more. This signal could be seen for miles. It would alert the ancestors and the outlanders alike. Wearily, they began to make their way back towards Selenheim. Tension was high, for they knew they had helped in breaking the great pact of Jifuro once more, and they had not had a chance to speak to the Queen before they departed on this journey. Would they be hailed as heroes for bringing aid? Or would they be sent to the gallows for their horrific deed? Rumors of Mordessa's vast armies turned out to be quite accurate. Day and night, the travelers were forced to hide among rocks and crevices, while troop after troop of nightmarish creatures passed by. The massive, twisted beasts and demons were a clear sign that the underworld itself was massing for battle. The ancient name of the mighty demon Vatar was often heard uttered among them reverently. The travelers knew there was very little time left indeed. At last, Selenheim Castle was in view, but they would soon face their greatest challenge yet. I am thrilled you people fell for it. Not that I had any choice. I was trapped. Your Majesty, the aid you asked the ancestors for is on the way. What aid? I did not send for the ancestors' aid. They despise us. Majesty, but they agreed to come, and they ordered your warriors to destroy the Kamsara Pass to allow them a way to bring their troops. So they also have broken the Pact of Jefuro. Perhaps they have come to their senses and seek peace with you now. Your Majesty, the Gunner has been captured by Outlanders. I fear the worst. High Counselor Mordessa must have taken her to the fortress in Arkmoor. You must travel there at once and prevent the summoning from taking place. There is no time to waste. Go! battle had begun. Vastly outnumbered, the armies of Selenheim were constantly in retreat towards the castle itself. Vatar's hordes crossed the rift, smashed through the defenses and pursued them. It seemed hopeless, but the death of the ancient demon came as a miracle. Echoing through the mountains and out over the fields, the sound of his final agony reached the ears of enclavers and outlanders alike. The Outlanders froze in their tracks, eyes widened in horror. It could not be. Vatar was undefeatable. Only moments later, the first of the Mechalon troops arrived in a cloud of dust and banners over the horizon. Mercilessly, they crashed into the confused Dragatar horde's rear and flanks. With a new boost of morale, the soldiers of Selenheim cried out their allegiance to their queen and valiantly took up arms once more. Without their leader and surrounded, Vatar's horde was quickly diminished and soon annihilated. History would not be allowed to repeat itself. As the chaos of battle gradually faded into silence, the small party of adventurers returned to Selenheim, soon to be celebrated as heroes. As Queen Eilindel, Princess Jacindra, and the Assembly of Six were praising them for their valiant efforts, Electo of Mechalon stepped into the chamber unannounced. 
Boldly, he asserted his authority as the savior of the Enclave. Angered by such arrogance, the Queen and her council were quick to voice their protests, and soon they seemed to be on the brink of a new war. High Wizard Zael himself stepped in. Had there not been enough fighting? They had both broken the Pact of Gifuro to help their kinsmen. Wearily, he urged them to come to peace. But Electo refused. Breaking the pact would no longer be tolerated. He declared that he would conquer the Outlands and try to restore the magic to them. And the people of Selenheim would learn their place as infidels for their past sins. Would the people of Mechalon succeed in conquering the remaining Dregatar and restore magic and peace to the soil? Or would they become like the enemy that had just been defeated? Only time would tell. But that is another story to be told another time.